Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Work Yogi Diaries. This is your host, Santosh Shiva. Every week, I bring you conversations with people who are masters of their craft or are on a journey to be masters. They see their work as a form of self-expression, not just to pay bills or to get by. I hope through these conversations, we get to hear new ideas, new ways of thinking and acting, new strategies, and perhaps inspire us to take our game to the next level. Our guest today finds inspiration to recreate herself every time she sits at the canvas. Each frame captures her most authentic inner personal experience. As a trained architect, she was already used to drawing sketches of buildings of different kinds, historic, contemporary, and even imagined. Art by Joan Mitchell, Kandinsky, Van Gogh, they all have inspired her. We explore her journey from being a hobbyist to a professional artist. What mental blocks did she have to give up to make her art appreciated by patrons? What did she have to confront to become an entrepreneur? What changes in her environment did she have to make to unleash her true spirit. Let's welcome Lavanya Chala. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing to it. Hit like if you like this video and please leave your comments and let us know if you took something away. Let's dig in. Hey, Lavanya, welcome to Work Yogi Diaries. Thank you, Santosh. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, so, it's so lovely to have you in the show. And uh, I've always admired your uh, journey and what you're doing and all that beautiful colors behind you uh, is your work of art. And um, so we're going to kind of get into that, uh, how, why, and you know, how you got here. But before that, let me kind of let you do a quick personal introduction and then we'll get in. Oh, <laughs> sorry, my kids. So I'm Lavanya. Uh, my name's Lavanya Chala and I live here in Dallas. I'm originally from Hyderabad, which is now Telangana. And I have two children, 13 and uh, eight. My younger one ha also has autism, and both of them are girls. And uh, let me see. I've been in Dallas for eight years now. I've been moved around a little bit in the U.S., and uh, this is where we we like it the most. And um, yeah, I my husband works at J.P. Morgan Chase, and uh, I think that's about it. From I'm an artist. Yeah. I paint. You can see the color behind me. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Texas, you like Dallas. <laughs> yes. I like the grid-like planning of the city. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people love Texas. I see a lot of people moving into Texas. And yeah, Texas has its pluses. All right. Hey, so yes, so Lavanya, you know, we are here to talk about your uh, journey as an artist. And um, so I think, let's do some flashback right and what you know where it all started like when you started your journey in work uh, were you did you always want to be an artist or was it something else so give us a I sense of that. i think i've always wanted to be an artist uh, i was actually going to write an exam for being like for the fine arts in india but then my coach suggested i try writing the architecture entrance exam and I got in and I was doing some research about it and I found that it was just as interesting as art. So I got into it and I enjoyed uh, thoroughly learning, designing and all the aspects of architecture. And uh, But art always has been a part of me since re young age. My mom introduced art to me mm. to keep me out of trouble. I was a handful <laughs> So when I was painting or doing things, I was really into it. And so that kind of has been there with me. Even in architecture, art is always is a, 
is an essential part. We would do designs, color sheets, and sketches. So it was kind of intertwined for me. And I was clear I would have my own architecture practice coming out of college. Like, there was no question. Mm -hmm. And then life had a different uh, plan for me. I, I left architecture and I worked in a company called Landmark. I worked there for two years. I w it was essentially management and I enjoyed it. I found that work creative too. I never expected anything else could be creative like architecture. And I did like enjoy it. I worked like long hours and then I got married and then I, we decided to start a family and my daughter was born. And then my husband had the opportunity to come to U.S. to work. And so out of the blue, we weren't planning for it. We weren't prepared for it. Uh, but our families wanted us to come here. And so things changed. And we got here. And then initially, you know, H wives of H1s cannot work. And so like back then, it was H4 visa. And I didn't try too hard. I worked, you know, long hours. I was very busy. So I was okay to take a break. And that's kind of how my initial, like my initial entry into my career was. And um, I even used to say things like someone who studied architecture for five years and gives it up must be mad. And then I went and did that exact thing. <laughs> so, yeah. And then... Um, I it takes a little bit of madness to do great stuff. It does. And I'm glad, you know, that that happened. That kind of uh, pushed me in a new direction. Um, and uh, even after I got here, I was always doing something crafty. I was either knitting or crocheting, making sweaters for my daughter. We were living in Chicago back then, so it made sense to do that. And then we moved to New Jersey and I used to sew clothes for my young older one. I used to uh, teach my friend's daughters to draw. Like I was doing stuff of an art teacher uh, out of my house. And to a point at the time I had like, I think 20 students come to my house and learn from me. And so somewhere or the other, I was creative. I was, you know, in the world of art. I was... Um, and I was really passionate back then about teaching kids because we don't usually give kids the best quality materials to learn with. We buy the cheaper ones. And what happens is they never have the experience of actually, you know, kind of doing well with the good quality ones. Because there's a different learning you get when you try something that actually looks vibrant and it's easy to draw with. So I used to encourage my students to really invest. Un unless you invest, you won't, you know, develop yourself in that. So there's no practice learning art. You know, there's really just learning art. So uh, that was kind of how life was kind of taking me. And then uh, do you want me to just jump right in? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I guess uh, the next thing would be, how it all kind of evolved into, you know, uh, you know, you 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 kind of teaching kids, you playing around. Art's been in central to your life that we get, and I guess the next thing would be okay. How did it evolve into a profession? Right, and so uh, I think it started with my daughter being diagnosed with autism and me confronting the fact that, um, you know, I had this point of view that once my kids go to college. That's when I can really start doing things. I can do things like, you know, right now, just cater to their future. And when we found out about the autism part, it was, well, it was devastating. And we also had to confront the fact that she's probably never going to live independently. So we are always going to have her part of our life. And that also kind of begged us to, like, we got to confront that there's no point waiting for them to be independent, to do some, you know, do the things that I want to do. And so that was when I start said that, okay, I'm going to start doing the things that matter to me right now. And I was participating in a few things. I was beginning, so uh, multiple things happened at the same time. I was uh, beginning to participate in programs where 
I was no longer Lavinia the mom or the wife. I was me. Yeah. And that's where I said, you know, uh, I was painting until then. I would finish a paint, like finish half of it. And it would turn out way ex- better than I expected. So then I would stop. Because I thought if I finished it, I would be ruining the painting. And so I had like five, yeah. like a couple of paintings, which I didn't touch for five years. And then when I looked at it, it looked ridiculous. Like I was waiting for some courage to come, descend on me to finish these paintings. And so I said, uh, I'm, you know, it starts right now. I started this 100-day project of painting for 100 days. And it wasn't like I didn't have any rules, like I cannot miss a day or, you know, uh, things like that. I took a year to finish it. Uh, I had to t- manage my kids. And so in those 100 days, I would paint every subject that kind of confronted me. Like I used to be scared of painting portraits because I would deform, I was scared I would deform them. Mm. So I, I did that. Like I had to paint for 100 days. I couldn't like, you know, keep playing, drawing the same stuff over and over. I had to explore everything. So I painted like landscapes. I would paint flowers, lots of flowers. I painted portraits of my kids. They came out fairly well. And then as I was doing that, I around about 75th day, I said, wow, I'm really enjoying this. I wonder if I could, at the end of 100 days, maybe put all this in a gallery show, invite people in my life to come see it. Mm -hmm. And that's when I thought, uh, you know, I'm enjoying this so much. Why why don't I make like 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 this my work, like a career out of it? And then I, I was beginning to dabble with, oh, I've never really tried abstract painting. So let me try that. And so I would try a few things. And I I used to, at the same time, uh, I was traveling to New York and L.A. And I was meeting people outside my usual social circle. And so I was inspired by the people I was meeting. I was, my, you know, outlook of life was opening up. And I met a few artists and I showed them my work, my abstract work. And she gave me the most harsh feedback. It was heartbreaking. She said it was terrible. But that kind of gave me the, you know, it gave me an opening that, okay, maybe this is something I need to learn. And that's when I had an opportunity. I, it, it, you know, universe provides you, you know, with opportunities that are perfect for you. And there was this teacher that was teaching abstract art. And it's not something that you can learn, but she was claiming she could do it. It was a course for $3,000. I had never spent that kind of money on myself. You know, uh, even in India, it was uh, one of the scholarship or free seats that I got. So the first thing that I had to confront was, am I worth investing in? Like I had this conversation that, oh my God, what if it goes, you know, a complete waste? So the first thing I had to confront there was, no, I'm worth it. I believe in myself and I'll do it. And some people even told me, you know, you can go do some uh, what's that community college courses or uh, for much lesser. But then I had this vision that this person is going to deliver on what she said. And so that's how I jumped into that program. I was completely nervous and uh, it was like an eight week program. I told my husband, I prepared my daughter that I'm going to dive deep into this and you go, you guys have to manage everything yourself. And they did that. And I spent the whole eight weeks kind of really like it was like a boot camp, reorganizing what I know about art, relearning things. And um, I loved it. I enjoyed the experience of painting abstract, of not having to stick to uh, to the subject stay true to the subject where I could express what I was feeling, what I, you know, what my uh, hands were moving. And then I finished the hundred day program, hundred days of art by the end so, of the project. So, you know, so uh, before you proceed, I think there's a lot of gold that you just shared, right? And uh, let's just call out that gold before you share more gold. Sure. <laughs> So, so one, you know, 
golden nugget that I captured in what you were sharing is there isn't some day. There is, you know, you you know, the the fact that you had to deal with the reality of an autistic child and of the fact that you know uh, she's going to be uh, dependent with you and well, if you had to do something, it was now. It's, you know, we all live in this illusion of someday, right? right. So that's one golden nugget that I, I I captured. The second golden nugget, I think, uh, was the fact that investing in yourself. And, um, I, we, you know, it's very common. It's so, we all get caught up into um, something else is more important than us and there's this whole martyr like life living that we end up doing right we all yes. walk around thinking oh my god i'm doing this big sacrifice for my family for my dad and this but i don't think we're doing any service in the process and that's a great golden nugget to have to invest in yourself in an area that you're passionate about and the other golden nugget that i captured was uh, the 100 days challenge they took on uh, you know i was uh, been reading this book called atomic habits and there's this whole uh, principle around 1% principle, right? You do 1% better than what you were doing or 1% more than what you were doing. It has a cumulative impact, uh, you know, and it's figuratively speaking, but something like 100 days, painting every day, whether it is for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, that's a classic example of, I think, what the author was talking about in that book. And uh, those are three big golden nuggets. And... So no, that's that's beautiful, and I hope that from a viewer perspective, that's something that can be wrapped in a little <laughs> gift wrap and kept and used. Yeah. All right. Go on. Uh, uh, so we were we were at you finished. You just finished the course. Yes, I finished the course, and uh, incidentally, I finished the hundred days of art also around the same time. And I was back then. I was sharing my journey like every day. I I and like kind of shared it with my community. I said, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be posting one painting a day on Facebook. And I opened an Instagram account and people were following me. Some people started with, oh, I'm going to do that in my area too. I like that idea. So there were some people kind of jumping in with me. There were some people inspired by the progress that was happening. Like they could see the difference. Like it was all out there. It wasn't like behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, somebody approached me about my 99th painting and they said, I'd like to buy this. You know, my mother just passed away and this painting kind of gives me like happiness. Like after that, it brings a smile on my face. Can I buy this? And it was like out of the blue. I It's not like I knew this person. And uh, that was the biggest like acknowledgement of what I was doing. And I said, definitely. And, you know, it, it wasn't like a perfect thing. Like the price I, my teacher said I should, uh, you know, quote for the art wasn't in her budget. And but we kind of spoke around it and we, we, you know, figured it out. And mm-hmm. everything from that point on, I was like jumping into the pool and then swimming. It wasn't like I knew everything. There was this community of other kid, other students I kind of uh, did the course with, but it, I didn't have anything figured out. Like the first time I, I took the painting for, I had to ship it to Phoenix and I took it to uh, USPS and they charged, they said, including packing and shipping, it would be 75% of, you know, the price of the painting. And then I said, that can't be right. And then I came home and I researched and found that I could buy boxes from this place in, you know, Dallas and I could ship, pack it myself and then take it to USPS and it's much cheaper. And so that Mm -hmm. attitude is what kind of kept me going since um, 2008, 18, which is when I first, you know, finished the course. And So did you have any... Naysayers? Yeah. Nays Did you have naysayers saying, why are you doing this? It, this is not going to work. Just keep it as a hobby. Did you have that at all? A little bit. I think my mom was worried I would be disappointed. She she kind of tried to shield me from that disappointment. She said, you know, don't get, feel bad if nobody really goes for it. And then, uh, 
she was here visiting me in 2019 and then i had an art show like i went to a a a place where they were doing an art and beer festival and i i took like five paintings and i came back with four and then she was surprised just like that and so mm. that kind of showed my and and the other point being in her favor in in india we do a lot we buy a lot of representational art like we buy art pieces of ganesha or idols or we have craft items abstract is not a um, readily accepted uh, mm-hmm. theme yet things are changing so my mom was not really like fully seeing the appeal for it so uh, that kind of changed her view when she saw it happen in person here so yeah i think there were a fair amount of uh, people who doubted it like okay we'll see but nobody was uh, vocal about it nobody said that to my face so i was lucky that way yeah <laughs> no people weren't telling you like just go, go to become an architect you know it pays better or oh know. i had someone say that actually why are you trying to be an artist when you already have this architecture background just you know do justice to that but yeah. uh i knew i was enjoying this way too much uh it was perfect for me like i would paint when my daughter goes to uh she so she goes to behavior therapy and she goes like 5 6 hours a day and so she's away from home when she's doing that and so that was my time and uh initially when the in 2019 she was doing it like 5 days a week for 5 hours she was away and that was like every day i spent painting like i would get some things done mo- but mostly i was painting in that time it was like my time excuse me it was like a release it was like a meditation it was like my yoga my puja and uh i invested emotionally into the whole practice of art and it's now been 3 years I've been doing this. Mm. And in fact, uh the first year I submitted taxes was my first year ever. Like in India I worked, but I never filed for my income tax returns and my mom was very upset about that. So this was the first year I actually paid my taxes. Like I paid taxes back then, but you know, applied for the returns and it was an extraordinary feeling. Like I didn't make much. I uh it wasn't a huge mm-hmm. you know paycheck that I, i you know accomplished but there's just the fact that i am now a business owner and so slowly i you know uh i would do things like i did everything backwards like i registered my company like 6 months after all this then i learned oh you have something called sales tax you have to pay every quarter on every sale you make like, oh okay and then i jumped into that and uh then they said uh you know you if you're an instagram and if you want to share your journey better you need to make videos you need to you know really put yourself out there so i i would say okay and so it's that willingness to kind of try things out and not being stopped by the first no and i've I, i'm not saying it's all rosy there are some art shows that i got rejected from it used to upset me a lot mm-hmm. and uh or you know the other pitfall i dealt with is comparison because in my my line of work i'm on instagram i'm on facebook all the time and yeah. i begin with oh let me follow this artist i want to learn what they, how they're doing it and it starts with i'm learning what they're saying to oh my god look at them they're so successful i'm not doing that i'm such a terrible artist and i had to confront what what success is for me so you know you you use this word confront quite a lot and i think uh i think what your i guess for people who are listening to this uh what you you mean uh, and, and let me actually why don't you tell me what you mean when you say confront what does it mean and how do you come to a point where you confront something right because a lot of this is in the blind spot you know this a lot of lot of work, uh for example rejection you know or pitfalls that you talk about uh what is happening to you is a function of something in the blind spot you don't know uh, when we get upset we don't know what is what drives our upset um 
but i guess somewhere you are able to catch it and then you are able to look at it and and able to do something with it so talk a little bit about that what do you mean when you say confront i think um when i mean confront is i know that i'm actually like when i fill the taxes and i say oh this is all i made i'm sure there are artists who are making double and triple of me and so it started with comparison and making what i accomplished you know insignificant like what they're accomplishing out there is more important than what i'm doing you know and with my daughter it's not like i can invest a whole lot of time there's only a certain amount of time and that's as far as i can stretch it that will go and so every step of the way when i came up against a barrier i would look at it that okay right now i am i'm thinking i'm not successful and i'm saying and so i went uh, on a year long inquiry about it i asked people that i knew of artists like okay what is success for you and then i found an article where one artist said you know there's no real measure for a for anyone to measure success you'll have to come up with your own set of um, kind of i'd say guidelines for uh, success and so that kind of got me thinking and then i bought a book about 100 women successful women and what they have to say about it and so i was constantly asking this question what is success do you think i'm a successful artist what would i say is success and i in part of that inquiry what something you know happened last year like i somebody asked me to make a commission and now how commissions work in the art world is they pay 50% up front and then we do the work and then we take it to them and if they like it or not it's up to them but that 50% is paid to the artist for the work they've done so far but i didn't do that i didn't take that up front 50% and i made the commission and they didn't like it and i knew at that point that i was not able to deliver on exactly what they wanted and i even told her that i don't think i can deliver what you're looking for because it's in, it's all abstract it's hard to kind of in so she so say sorry uh, i didn't uh, so let when me you say commission uh, i didn't catch that part so yeah so what uh, explain to us about commission sure. i didn't i didn't understand so i had that. this painting that i did which was large and she wanted the same painting on a smaller scale now if you see my work is not like it's not like drawing an apple that i can draw another apple smaller it's it it's a lot of experimentation in my work there's a lot of free loose marks and i thought i could reproduce like kind of make the same painting just smaller so it had all the right elements but she didn't get the same kind of vibe or experience from it so she didn't like it so at that point i said it's okay let's just drop it uh, i don't think i can actually you know even though i painted the first painting i cannot really repaint it again uh in fact they say that about forgeries like you don't get the same experience even if it's a really good forgery like you get from the original so it kind of fell through and 6 months later she writes to me saying she's starting a business and one of my paintings from you know when we were talking about the commission 6 months ago she really likes it and she wanted to buy it and so that's when i got that oh i took that commission as a you know failure like i was upset for 3 4 weeks after i couldn't paint i it i had to kind of do a lot of things to kind of get okay about it and it wasn't her fault or, or the person's fault it was just unfortunate it didn't work out and she came back to buy a big painting and it was a big painting it was like uh, this big and so that itself i got that that is success like leaving the customer with a delightful experience that they want to come back that is truly what success is for me and i got uh, and i had to articulate for myself that every failure in every failure there's success so that those were the kind of learnings that i i kind of experienced on the court like on the job training that kind of uh contributed to my growth and development as an artist 
<laughs> that's quite yeah. a bit. No, that's that's gold. That's that's a lot of gold there. Now you know, uh, art is so subjective, right? And um, so, how do you uh, how how are you able to attract the right clientele for the kind of art you make? Because I've seen, I have I have a piece of your art. We love it, and it's beautiful. It's colorful. It's uh, you know, it's um, but it's very abstract. You know, you can interpret it in many ways. So talk a little bit about how does one learn to appreciate abstract art and how, you know, how do you find these people who know how to appreciate your art? So I think I, I'd answer that in like two parts. Mm-hmm. One is uh, not everybody gets gets the, like, I don't claim to kind of um, paint for everyone. And so it's it's more like a visceral experience. Like if somebody sees this painting, and if they have like body sensations, like they they feel excited, they feel elated, they feel calm. That's kind of what I'm really going for, like an emotional reaction to the painting, and not really an understanding of it. And so even my own husband, who has a very uh, like objective view about art, over the like few last few years, his point of view has been shifting, like. Okay, he he says that every time I look at a painting, I see something new to appreciate about it. So it's more about Mm -hmm. bringing out an experience in the people who see it, like the audience, is uh, my main aim. Like I want to leave people excited about color, leave people happy and joyful. Like, oh, you know, this is not the kind of color you see every day in nature. So that kind of intense excitement. Mm -hmm. And the other thing about how I find people, I found that people who know me are most likely to buy, like not just like acquaintances, but uh, the person who bought that painting, they heard me on another podcast and they really got connected to my story and my sharing and they really, they then saw my art. And so many places I found that people connect with me and then connect with my art. And what it stands for or, you know, the place that it kind of comes out of. And I've even had people I've never met. I don't know. I They contacted me on Instagram and bought my art. And if, it's almost like surreal in that moment. But they, they really got connected with the art, the colors or, you know, uh, the, the experience that they have when they look at it. But definitely what I would say, how I reached out to these people is just by being out there, sharing, like Mm -hmm. really not hesitating, like putting it all out there and talking about my art and uh, inviting people to just be part of the journey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've uh, heard and, you know, you get one gets to read about that artists tend to put their emotional state into their you know work they're doing at that moment does that happen to you i think so because uh lately during the pandemic it's been tough it's been it's kind of been like rough waters for me with my daughter like she unlearned a lot of her skills and uh a lot of uh responsibility fell on my shoulder because I'm the one not working officially. Like my husband has his job nine to five, six. My daughter, has older one has her school. Even my mom would say, you know, let him work. Or we're here because of his work visa. So I, it doesn't make sense kind of disturbing him. So I had to confront kind of how to balance taking care of her and you know, keeping up my art practice. And so if you see my, my last years, like 2020 work is really intense. It's really uh, exciting also because I went through these roller coaster emotions of why me, just because I'm the woman and the wife, (laughs) that's why this is happening. And to a place where, you know, me and my husband worked it out. I used to paint in the garage where my daughter wouldn't see, or he would take her out for a, you know, bike ride and we would just get a little scribbling on on a sketchbook. And all of those kind of got into one painting. 
It's like all that experimentation and play that I did in those 15 minutes, half an hour in the garage, kind of found itself into a painting, which was really, really powerful. And that was the painting that I uh, recently shipped to Canada. And so I think I do put a lot of emotion into it. And some days when I'm really low and dealing with circumstances being overwhelming, it, it I think shows in my, my work. And I think every time it's, it's kind of swimming out of that murky waters, it's kind of what gives my art that um, desire or that pleasure to watch. Yeah, yeah, I would probably use the word character and texture. And, you know, a lot of people think that artists are people who just sit, have nothing to do. They're meditating, looking at the skies or the oceans and have these inspirations coming up. That's the image that you get from movies and books. And here's an artist who's dealing with, a, uh, you know, dealing with having to deal with a daughter, you know, take care of her daughter, uh, you know, be take care of home and have all these conversations around hey you know husband's got to go work and you're producing great work and you know just look at the 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 the, the myth out there about what artists are you know and, and 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 how what a day in a life of an artist actually looks like that you still have to find the time and create the passion and create the inspiration it just doesn't happen by sitting by ocean and smoking a cigar yes <laughs> In fact, uh, I think uh, I have to share this. Vincent Van Gogh has been my inspiration as a child. I used to, I was really moved by how his, like, you know, his thick textures. You could see his pain and his, like, struggles in his, like, textures. His paintings were beautiful. And I was really always, like, captivated by that whole story of him not just his art, but kind of what he went through to kind of produce all that. And I think you can see that in an artist's work that kind of shows their, uh, you know, passion, their, their, their nature, like how impacted they were by what they were dealing with. And I'm pretty intense to be around. <laughs> my, my family will vouch for that. I'm not an easy person to be with. Uh, like I'm easy going like outside. But at home, yeah. uh, it gets pretty noisy <laughs> and exciting. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. So, you know, one thing I'm hearing is that for someone to who's new to uh, appreciating art and or investing in art, knowing the artist is a big asset, right? And so in this case, knowing you, your story, and what's behind, what's what, what drives you, your values – has a certain impact in learning to uh, appreciate abstract art. Mm. And is there anything else you think is important for someone who wants to, uh, you know, be a student of, uh, not to paint, but to be a consumer of abstract art? What else do you think I, is important? I would say, like, be with the art. Look at the art and look at, does it fee make you re-examine something? Does it, like, kind of want you to appreciate something like sometimes just one color in the whole painting is you know like kind of draws you in does it uh like when you look at it do you feel excited do you feel like look at if you feel any of these emotions like some art actually makes you feel very uncomfortable and that's what the artist is going for they're confronting you with an with what something that we don't want to look at like some something harsh so i would say if it moves you from a state like previously when you walked up to the art if it leaves you in a different place from that then that art has done done something for you or look at something that connects you with it and that would and it doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy it or own it but really enjoy what something abstract can do for you because there's a lot like museums have a lot of beautiful art and uh you know every time i visit i'm i'm left awed and inspired that how did that person paint such a you know one story painting like i know how i can do this it this itself takes some effort for me so there's 
all those elements like there were people who put the painting on the floor and painted many people uh, say about jason pollock like he just threw paint but then if you learn more about it he actually drew things and then he put layers and layers on it mm-hmm. and so it kind of he developed the painting so i would say you know look at it spend time with it answer a few questions yep. for yourself and then see if you like it or not because i think like or not like is a very binary kind of way to judge art yeah yeah so yeah that's 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 beautiful and you know a lot of lot of things are like that right uh, you know like for example even tasting in that uh, i mean i'm reminded of tasting as a close analogy like when people talk about uh, learning to enjoy wine for example you know because there are complex flavors that don't fit in a binary of a sweet or a bitter or a spicy those are very binary flavors and i think in art what i'm also hearing in what you're saying is because there's such a such a, a spectrum of colors or something that's out on on the canvas when you're looking at it it's obviously taking you outside your very fixed views or interpretations that exist in your mind pre exist in your mind so it kind of forces you to step out of it in some way and explore some areas uh visually uh, is is i'm i'm just making this up but i think that's what i'm hearing in, yes. in what you're saying in fact um i had it just now uh when i started painting in 2018 that was my biggest inspiration my daughter like how uh like what she, like we over the past few years we've grown to understand that even though she doesn't do anything perfect like a kid should do by that age what she does there's so much of uh beauty in it like she learns through play and uh she learns to you know touch like a baby exploring everything and that's how she understands her understanding is different and so i've come to like there was a point when i, I used to say that in my artist statement that i want to show the messy the ugly part of life and embrace that and show that that can be beautiful like it doesn't have to all go in a straight line neatly in a box the way like a mold and even the the you know unconventional the eccentric parts of life can be beautiful so no oh, that's so beautifully said um i think life in general is chaotic Yes. and i think it's just that we try to put order in it which is very artificial and inauthentic uh, authentically everything is chaotic and uh, yeah and you know if i think about uh, what's going on in my life right now there's a lot of chaos and what do i try to do i try to fix it and park it because it's comfortable for me yes <laughs> and 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 there's no beauty in it and and that's that's so beautiful uh, that allows me to uh that gives me a nice little bulb going off in my head right now nice beautiful so what next in your journey uh, where, where is this, where is this headed well uh i'm i'm actually right now i'm i'm painting bigger like this is mm. one of the big things have been kind of stretching myself to paint bigger i i want to get a good, bigger studio i'm hoping to get a few like solo shows and get my art out there but at the same time i'm willing to play like i want i recently like last year 2020 december i came together with a, a group of other artists and we produced like a set of uh eight christmas cards which e- with each of us our art on it and it came together so last minute and it was produced so beautifully and you know we ordered 50 sets we sold 46 and so I'm beginning to actually want to work with other artists. I'm like the solo kind of person. I'll work on my own. I like being my own boss. Mm. But uh I really want to explore working with other artists, working in a team and kind of doing things together. We are actually putting on an art show uh end of this year like November uh, October November in a uh local gallery in Allen, Texas and so that's one of the things we are kind of preparing for we are curating our own art we decided we won't wait for someone to invite us 
to do a show and we'll produce our own show. So we're doing that. And I, I really want to push the envelope, you know, envelope of what's possible for me. Like uh, I've been working on having my art in a few magazines and a few coffee table books. So yeah, that's, I want to keep doing that. And it doesn't always go as planned because my daughter's, whenever my daughter's yep. uh, therapy hours change, like when insurance reduces t- hours, she's, you know, two days at home and three days at the clinic. So that reduces my time. And then that time, my challenge is how to be more efficient in the less, in the hours I have. So I think uh, the biggest thing I would say, if I get to continue, keep doing what I do, that'll be the biggest uh like reward for me. Yep. That's beautiful. Um, uh, you know, and I think uh, wishing you continued growth and whatever you said uh, makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, yeah, we hope to see more work and hope to see more people appreciating abstract art. And this was definitely a very insightful conversation for me. And I hope, folks who are listening to this um, you know there's a few things that uh, they are taking away in terms of what it means to appreciate abstract art what's possible what's what's in it for them to have a piece of abstract art at home uh, what it brings for them uh, in their life and uh, and what goes behind it for from an artist like you and it's not just you know some random uh, color but there's a lot of a lot of emotion and uh, story behind it so that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So, hey, that was a wonderful conversation. And um, we're kind of uh, coming to uh, the la- next part of our, you know, conversation, which is I have a set of uh, rapid fire questions, which is for fun, uh, related to your work journey mostly, but something, something's about you as well. So are you ready for that? Okay. <laughs> Sure, I've never done this before. So, you know, for most of my shows, it never becomes a rapid fire. People take their time to respond, so I'm I'm fine with that as long as it's something fun, right? Okay. So, the first question I have is, what's the best time of the day you like to paint? Ah, uh, I would say eight a.m. <laughs> but it's what's really about eight a.m. Eight a, as soon as I wake up, I want to get into painting. But really, it is like one or two in the afternoon. Okay. But your favorite is in the morning. First morning. In the morning. Yeah, got it. Is there a favorite song or any f- a piece of music that uplifts your artistic sensibilities? Well, actually, um, I would listen to Devan and old black and white songs. It's kind of soothing. It gets my mind out of everyday life. Yeah. And so it's, it's funny, but I like it. I like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. Those old Kishore Kumar songs. Is, yes. Or was it pri- pre-Kishore Kumar? Well, actually, I listened to Kishore Kumar so much in my childhood that I'm now tired of it. <laughs> but it's right now Devanand till I get tired of it. But. So Devanand, when Devanand was acting, who was singing for him? I think Mohammad Rafi. Okay. So it's a lot okay. of Mohammad Rafi, Rafi songs. Yeah. yeah, got it, got it. All right. If a movie were made of you, what genre would it be and who would play you? Oh, first, it would be a dysfunctional sitcom. Uh, it would be like one of those movies where everything goes wrong and you're laughing about their misery. Who would play me? Uh, I think probably Vidya Balan would be exciting. But someone uh, like feisty, <laughs> who's crazy enough, wacky, uh, I can't remember a name, but uh, Karina Kapoor, maybe. Uh, maybe yes. <laughs> Feisty for sure. <laughs> and I'm yeah, all that like... at home, not outside. I'm outside, I'm with the good girl. So yeah, you're the you're the zen like person. When from when I see yes. you, I've never seen the PhD side of you. You're always the zen, smiling, calm. Yeah, yeah. All right. What's your favorite junk food? Oh, God. I would have said Pani Puri. But lately, there's this sandwich called Katapa Sandwich at a restaurant in Dallas. Uh, it's called Honest Restaurant. 
and it's a multi layered like you know potato cucumber desi sandwich with lots of cheese and flavors in it so that's my junk food right now that's your junk food nice never heard of the katafa next time in dallas i'm going to try that yes <laughs> all right the last one which is um, uh and maybe you answered this but let me go ahead and ask you anyway uh van go or monet oh i think van go yeah And there's an, another one also, Joan Mitchell. Uh, it looks like a bunch of scribblings or rough marks, but it's it's. I always wonder how did she do it? Like I want to paint like that. I don't even know how where to start. So. Lovely. All right. Hey, you did well. That was uh, <laughs> okay. that was some fun answers there. So we're kind of coming to end of our conversation. Um, you know is there anything you want to say i'll give you the last word any message you want to give um i always like to say this like to parents who have kids who have an inclination towards art i get them like artist quality materials mm-hmm. you know let them play with it and uh all of the kids i've seen from till 5 they have these beautiful imaginative paintings and if you see there are artists who paint like kids and their art is really appreciated and from 5 they go through this process of oh you know i didn't draw this person well he needs to look mm-hmm. perfect this is not a great looking dog so they start criticizing themselves and actually at you know age 35 i had to unlearn all that like i had to unlearn what's a good painting i had to unlearn the you know perfect drawing a human being perfect is art you have photographs for that why do you need my art for that yeah. so really encourage that imaginative you know uh muscle they have because once they lose it it takes so much to unlo- unlearn so definitely encourage that and i the other thing i'd say is it's never too late to pursue your passion what you like yeah. invest in yourself jump in try it out don't be scared and you might just enjoy what you're doing yeah in fact beautiful messages i one little uh funny thing is i keep telling my husband that if something happens to me you know this is my legacy sell this and make sure the kids have a good future because once i'm gone it'll be even more like you know sought after so it's life is now don't wait yeah Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful Lavanya. That was a wonderful conversation. Um and thanks a lot for taking your time and sharing your story on my show today. Have a wonderful rest of the evening and we shall stay in touch. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye.